Welcome to Ascending DC channel. We are an AWS certified partner to provide cloud consulting and technical support to clients who are looking for cloud solutions to tackle the challenge in their day-to-day -day operations. This video is one of the many short videos we are producing. In each of them, we are going to demo and explain when used for AWS practice that can be used to improve the efficiency and accuracy of your work. All these tricks have been proved effective in our client's success. If you are a project manager, DevOps, architect, software engineer, or just looking for useful cloud practice, this video is made for you. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Today, we are going to talk about building data lake on AWS Cloud using lake formation and also share specific challenger to build lake formation in cross accounts. Celeste will go over the key instruction and Kevin will run a demo for us. Celeste, you're up. Thank you, Rio. Hello, my name is Celeste. I'm a data engineer in Ascending. In this session, we're going through the following topics. First, we introduce what lake formation is. Next, we focus on the topic of organization structured data lake. Finally, we will demonstrate how to build a cross account data lake using AWS lake formation. So what is lake formation? AWS lake formation is an AWS analytics service that we are using to help customers refactor the data infrastructure, data integration, data governance, data management, and data analytics and reporting from multiple source data. By integrating lake formation with other AWS services, we can query data in Athena, visualize them in QuickSight, and consume by downstream applications. Nowadays, building and managing data lake has become a hot issue. This demo will focus on one of the interesting topic, how to build a data lake in cross-account practice or organization account structured data lake. In many large organizations, the account setup is much complicated due to security concerns. AWS has recommended the organization account structure for large enterprise to manage their cloud infrastructure more efficiently. AWS enables users to achieve resource independency and isolation, which means that users of other accounts do not have access to the resource by default. Using a multi-account environment is an AWS best practice that offers several benefits. For example, rapid innovation with various requirements, simplified billing with flexible security controls, and easily to adapt to the business processes. Now let's start the demo. Let's talk about a real world scenario. Assuming we have three accounts. Account one contains data and we call it a data source account. Account two contains AWS data catalog, lake formation center account. Account three is a consumption account, which is used by such users as data analysts or data scientists who will use AWS services, such as Athena, QuickSight, and so on. We use account one to store the data. All of the data from the data sources like DynamoDB, ProStreetSQL, and many other database engines will be eventually converted into CSV or Parquet format and stored in the S3 buckets. We use account two to build our data lake and AWS Glue data catalog with AWS lake formation permission control. The data consumers will use account three to analyze data through AWS services. Note that AWS lake formation may be needed for all the three accounts, but only the admin account, which is account two, is to use to build the data catalog and control permissions. And make sure you are the admin of each lake formation. To effectively connect these three accounts, we propose a cross account structure. The structure contains two parts, storage cross account and a consumption cross account. Storage cross account implements data lake administrator account, which is account two, to manage the data stored in the data source account, which is account one. Consumption across account implements data lake administrator account, which is account two, to control the access permissions of all users, which is account three, to the data. Next, we will explain these two parts in detail. First, let's talk about the storage cross account. As we mentioned before, 
account one stores all the data sources we will use. But for different data sources, the process will be slightly different. This demo, we, we use S3 and RDS data as the data sources. AWS Lake Formation enables the user to register S3 locations across AWS accounts, which means users can register a S3 bucket in account one into a different account that contains blue data catalog. In our case, it's account two. We can complete the S3 policy setting through uh, cloud formation. Just need to go to the AWS Cloud Formation Console, click Stacks, create a stack with new resources. Um, then we choose template is ready to upload a prepared cloud formation template. We click choose file, choose our template. Click next. Give the stack name. Type the as bucket name. Click next. We keep the default settings of config stack options. Click next. Review our stack and click create stack. Then after a few seconds, uh, create will complete. Now we can back to our F3 bucket to check the permission. After setting the policy of S3 bucket, we can now use the AWS Lake Formation Administrator account role to register the specific S3 bucket location by type the bucket name. We've already registered that S3 bucket to our Lake Formation Admin account. If you have any questions about CloudFormation, please follow our other videos in the description to learn best practices of CloudFormation. After registering the bucket location, we need to create a database in the AWS Glue Data Catalog. The database here is not the concept of relational database. It refers to the Glue database, which is used to store the data catalog, such as um, metadata and a schema for registered F3 buckets. To do so, users need to click Create Database, Choose Database, uh, and check the default permission settings. Then we need to use AWS Glue Crawler to gather catalog of data. To do so, you need to go to AWS Glue Console, choose Crawler, click Add Crawler, give Crawler a name. Next, choose the source type, and copy method you want. Here we keep the default settings, keep, click next. So select, select the type of data, uh, we select S3, then choose to save the data catalog to the current account. Then we type the location of the S3 data, click next. Create a table under the database we created before. Create a table under the database we created before. Review and create. Run the crawler. Since we run the crawler already, those are the tables we got in late formation. So far, we have successfully linked the S3 data in account one with account two. For RDS data, We use Blueprint previewed workflow. Know that the Blueprint here is provided by AWS Lake Formation in account one, which is used to crawl, clean, and convert external RDS data because the AWS Blue JDC connection in the workflow must be in the same account with the data source. There are two options when loading the external database to the data lake. Database snapshot will load all data and information of the database to the data lake. Incremental database will load um, all data from the database table to the data lake and set bookmark for the next incremental database blueprint run. In this case, we use 
database snapshot. After choosing the type of workflow, we need to choose the database connection they created in AWS Boot and set the path from which to ingest the data. Set the targeted database in F3 bucket to store the landing data with Parquet or CSV format. Set import frequency to manage the data upload frequency. Enter workflow name and table prefix. We have to choose an AM role with specific permissions, such as AWS Boot Service, or choose the IAM role created when setting up AWS Lake Formation. After the above creation, we run the workflow. Since the process may take a long time, we have run it already. After it finished, we could have a database and the tables shown in our data lake. So far, we successfully converted the RDS data into S3 data and stored it in the S3 bucket. The rest of operations like the registering and data crawling are the same to the S3 cross account operation mentioned earlier. Next, we will show how to consume the data in consumption cross account, which is account three in our example. When we have prepared data, we need to use the admin account, which is account two, to manage the permissions of each user. The users who use Athena, EMR, Redshift, or QuickSight in account three need access to the data for different purposes. To do so, the lake formation admin in account two must grant the permission to the users. But before granting permissions, remember to revoke permission with name IEM allow principles, which is automatically created by the service after generating a new table. Grant permissions to the external account in account three. Determine if they can access and what they can do to the database tables and columns. And consumers like data analysts or data scientists in account three need to accept the invitation in the AWS Resource Access Manager. Then create a new glue database or use an existing glue database in their data lake to store the new table. Create a resource link. Create a resource link and connect the new table with the table shared by the administrator. Then the user can access the data lake by different granularity. That's the end of our demo. Thank you, Kevin Celeste, for providing us a demo about data lake formation in cross account setting. We'll share a cloud formation template to help developers set their AWS formation faster and easier in our description. If you have any question, feel free to contact support at ascendingdc.com. And see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Please leave your comments, questions, critics to us so we know you are watching. Again, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel ascending dc and stay tuned for our next video see you next week